Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another live stream show. That's right, it's Sunday night, and it's time for that live stream fishing show. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. I appreciate everybody hanging out with us tonight here at Hubbard's Marina for another live stream show. It is Sunday night, May 31st. That's right, the eve of Red Snapper season. It is May 31st at 8.29 p.m. and we are just about ready to get started on our live stream show. Hopefully you guys are ready for a great show. We've got some killer photos and lots of good stuff to talk about tonight here at Hubbard's Marina. Just need a few minutes here to get started and uh, we'll be getting that video rolling shortly. While we get started, don't forget to comment where you're watching from uh, don't forget to share this video if you're watching on facebook don't forget to share this video with your friends <clears throat> and in your favorite fishing club if you're watching on youtube don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and then also and in your favorite don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're watching on youtube watching on youtube and always don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to our channel and follow us as well. We are going to get started here shortly. We got lots of cool stuff to talk about. We've got red snapper season starting tomorrow uh, for two months. We're looking forward to that. We also got some awesome photos to show you as well. We've got some cool stuff going on here at Hubbard's Marina. Looking forward to some other great stuff coming up. So lots of good topics to cover tonight, plus some cool photos from all our trips. Definitely been some good stuff going on and some bad stuff. We're going to cover that too. Don't worry. We got a little bit of everything tonight. Now, if only I could figure there we go. Sometimes it likes to be a little tricky with me. Working through this here, guys. We're going to get started shortly while you're waiting. Don't forget to grab yourself a drink. Grab yourself some popcorn. And also, don't forget to comment where you're watching from. Make sure you comment at least one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream in order to get an opportunity to win some free fishing trips. That's right. If you want a chance to win some free fishing trips, got to comment at least one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream in order to be eligible to win. We are going to get started here very shortly. Don't forget to comment. That's how you get eligible to win. And then don't forget win as well to share free. with your friends. Who's ready for red snapper season? Who's ready to go fishing? Hopefully, everybody's ready for an escape. I know I am. I'm ready to escape offshore for sure. Oh, thanks, Robert Allen, for sending some stars. Uh, Robert Allen sending multiple stars. Thanks, buddy. For those of you who don't know, uh, our Facebook page, our Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, is now eligible for stars. So if you don't know what stars are, Basically, it is a way for you to show your support for Hubbard's Marina and become a supporter online. You get a little supporter badge. It's pretty cool. So the stars are new. It's a new thing. Facebook just started. Thanks, Joey Barlow, for sending some stars. Great way to get a shout out during the video for sure. Appreciate the stars, guys. Now we are almost ready to rock and roll. One last thing here, and then we will get started on the show. Hopefully everybody's ready for a great show. I know I am. A little, uh, little unprepared tonight, I apologize. I got carried away. I made some killer steaks tonight. Very good. Very good eating. And, um... Uh, I drank a lot of Jameson. <laughs> uh, but that's part of it, right? Let's see here. There we go. And 
We are almost ready to get started. Just getting everything lined up. We do have our new online store that has been finished. Pretty cool, the new online store for sure. If you haven't checked it out yet, you are missing out. So make sure you check out that online store. We're going to go over that tonight for sure. We're going to talk a little bit about the weather as well. Weather is getting a little topsy-turvy here for the first uh, week of Red Snapper season, but we are not going to let us... We are not going to let that freak us out just yet. It's still too early to freak out about the weather. But let's go ahead and get rocking. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, thanks, Tram Tramon Burke, for sending some stars. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. We are going to get rolling here and talk a little bit about what we've been catching. First, we're going to start inshore, talk a little bit about uh, what's been going on inshore, what we've been seeing, what we've been catching, and work our way near shore and then offshore as well. Thanks, Sarah, uh, for sending some stars as well. These stars are pretty cool. I like it. I don't know exactly how it works. Facebook just kind of rolled it out on me, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so first, we're going to start inshore and look at what's been happening inshore. The red fish bite has been really good in upper Tampa Bay. A lot of red fish moving around upper Tampa Bay, especially higher tides. We've been seeing a lot of red fish action. Uh, you're able to find some red fish out towards the mouth of the bay, but definitely more red fish action in upper Tampa Bay. Let's see here. Thanks, Demetrius, for some more stars. We got uh, lots of snook action as well along the beaches during the day, at night, during in the pass at night. There's a lot of snook action. Uh, definitely some big snook staging up in the passes. And uh, there's still some snook left in the back bay waters along the flats. Seeing a lot of big trout on the edges of the grass flats, the cuts, the holes, some big trout. Uh, but the big snook are definitely the story right now. Thanks, Elise Adele, for sending some stars. Let's work our way near shore. Got a lot of photos near shore, too. We've been seeing the Mahi Mahi are back. That's some big news for sure. Excited about those Mahi Mahi. We've been seeing Mahi Mahi on our five hour, or excuse me, our 10 hour trips, our longer range private charters like the Hub five, six, seven, eight hour trips. Uh, the hub was on a 10 hour trip with this gentleman today. This is Mr. Rick Waldrop. Uh, everybody wish Rick a happy birthday. It is his 29th birthday today and uh, he celebrated it out fishing on the hub with some friends and they caught some nice red grouper, some lane snapper and lots of these mahi mahi. So it was a great time on the hub. Uh, for sure, catching some good fish. Uh, the Hub did really well today on a 10-hour all-day private charter. Um, but we will show you. Man, I edited all these photos, and I don't know where the heck I edited them. Let's see if I can't find them. Because they were a lot better all nice and cropped out. <laughs> and then, of course, during the show, they seemed to disappear on me. Yeah, that must be where they are. I found them, don't worry. So we're going to move offshore, show you what that 39 hour brought in this morning. They brought in some nice fish on that 39 hour. Definitely a little slower than we would have liked on this 39 hour trip, but they caught some nice fish, nice big old mangrove. This is a squirrel fish. That is the scientific name, squirrel fish. But they are known commonly as a razor fish. That sucker has some serious gill plates on it. It will mess you up. It will cut you in seconds. So it's a, called a squirrel fish if you're in a biology lab. But on a fishing boat, they're commonly referred to as a razor fish for sure. Uh, it's another nice big mangrove from Estelle. 
Caught a lot of Almaco jacks on this 39 hour trip. Definitely a little slower fishing than we would have liked on the Amberjack, but the Almacos definitely showed up. Caught a lot of Almaco jacks. Another nice big mangrove from Denoris. Big old kingfish from Cliff Vandenbosch. Nice big flag yellowtail. Some throwback gad grouper from Ed Hall. Jesse Myers with the big old tuna. Nice big old tuna. And that right there is not an amberjack. That is an Almaco jack. Monster Almaco jack. This is Sean Porchkey. He actually slapped this amberjack down at the uh, weigh-in this morning. And I was like, hey man, nice amberjack. <laughs> and everybody looked at me. And I looked at the fish and I was like, holy cow, that is a monster Almaco jack. Not an amberjack. Pretty crazy. Definitely has got the body of an amberjack. Uh, but you can tell by that top dorsal that that is an Almaco jack. They have this much more pronounced top dorsal fin, whereas an Almaco, or a amber jack would just have that flat dorsal fin. So pretty interesting. Nice little sand tile from Estelle. We caught and released some big red snapper, some more Almacos. Another nice red snapper, red snapper. Red snapper opens tomorrow, so I left those in there because we're excited. We're excited about red snapper. Nice big old scamp groupers, some more catch and release red snappers, some big old mangroves from Jesse and his buddy. And then a gorgeous sunrise. Tammy is getting so good with her camera. Look at that sunrise she took a photo of this morning. <laughs> she is getting into the photography. And the last round of photos we have for you is from the Flying Hub 2. So the Flying Hub 2 is back in action and they are stroking the fish. We got Captain Rich Golis uh, almost ready to go full time on the Flying Hub 2. He is definitely ready to rock and roll. He knows the boat, he knows the fish, and uh, he's really getting the hang of things quickly. Captain Joe's working with Captain Rich. And uh, right now, Captain Rich and Captain Joe are both t uh, tag team in the Flying Hub 2 uh, with a lot of success. Thanks, Justin Printup, for the stars. Thanks, Melissa, for the stars. Melissa Chamberlain. Randy Cassell, appreciate the stars. Thank you. I uh, got distracted already. Forgot about that. Uh, there is Captain Rich Golis with some big red grouper from the Flying Hub 2 today. Definitely a great trip. Oh. Great trip, some big red grouper. They got 15 keeper red grouper on the Flying Hub 2 today. Killer trip. They also ran across a little piece of bottom. Had to stop on it, check it out, and it was loaded down. They caught probably a dozen big gag grouper. They caught some monster red snapper, and they were gone in a matter of just a few moments because they're saving that spot for tomorrow when gag grouper and red snapper reopen. So all these fish are on one little flurry, one little quick stop. Some beautiful fish that we're going to go back for tomorrow now that Red Snapper and Gag Grouper open up tomorrow. We're very excited, as I said. Lance with a nice big old Red Grouper. We got Mark Tondi with a nice big Amberjack from the Flying Hub 2. There is a Shark Bite Gag Grouper. That is a old healed Shark Bite wound on this Gag Grouper. Almost its total top dorsal fin is gone. That skin is totally healed up on top of that fish. Joe was proud of that one. Pretty weird looking gag grouper. Completely chomped and it recovered and uh, still caught it. So pretty cool. Uh, the Flying Hub 2 has been doing really well on the red grouper. They've been catching some nice big old mangroves and a few amberjack here and there. And we're very excited for these red snapper. Red snapper season is on the doorstep. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about red snapper. Red snapper are only open for a short period of time, but hey, we're going to make the most of it. Uh, red snapper definitely like a certain set of baits. So we're going to start the show, talk a little bit about red snapper. 
and uh, of course a little bit about gag grouper as well um, because that's what's happening right now we have amberjack open through the month of may um, but amberjack are closing uh june 1st so amberjack close tonight at midnight red snapper and gag grouper open up at 1201 a.m now gag grouper bite best and months ending in er like october november december they don't bite too well in september but october november december definitely is prime time for those gag grouper so we're looking forward to this fall and winter for those gags when they come inshore and they make it easy for the gag grouper inshore near shore and offshore uh, during the summertime when gag grouper first open up they are definitely a little bit more tricky uh, they're out there in deeper water for sure a little harder to get to a little longer ride but we can get to those gag grouper in the summertime uh, but we mainly catch them on the 12 hour extremes the 39 hours the 44 hours uh, definitely the best way to target those gags when they open now Red snapper, on the other hand, they typically start out at around 120 to about 150 foot of water. If you want to catch big red snapper consistently, I would start out there definitely deeper, right around 150 foot of water. Uh, all the way up to about 300 foot, you can find those red snapper very large and very consistently so we're looking forward to that uh, red snapper like around a 60 pound leader is what i would use uh, typically i do about a 50 to 60 pound leader with double snelled six aught hooks uh, when i'm using dead bait for red snapper double snell is the way to go a long strip of squid a big thread fin um, one of my favorite baits for red snapper is probably a bonita strip uh, even octopus works an octopus tentacle works really well for those red snapper because it stays on the hook well they eat vertical jigs uh, if i'm fishing live bait for red snapper a squirrel fish or sand perch is a really good bait uh, but they also like pig fish pig fish they will eat just about anything you send down there if it's frisky and good looking those red snapper are ready to rock and roll on that bait for sure so uh, we're excited. We're excited for those red snapper for sure. It's going to be a great season and uh, it's uh, never long enough. Uh, it's going to start June 1st. It's going to run till the end of day, August 1st. Uh, thanks, Rich uh, Richard Blazek and uh, Patrick Hong uh, for those stars. I appreciate it. Um, now let's get into some weather we want to talk a little bit about the weather uh now this time of year uh hurricane season is here so what that means is we have these active tropics and the tropics are so very volatile especially in early hurricane season things can go up and things can go down so let me tell you the story before i pull it up because it might have been completely changed since last time I looked. This morning, I looked at it, and there was a little tropical system that was coming off the coast of uh, uh, southern Mexico, Yucatan Peninsula. It was coming into the Gulf, but it was kind of staying along the coast of Mexico, going up into Texas. That was occurring around June 7th, 8th, and 9th. That's the end of this coming week, essentially. Um, but it wasn't really affecting our trips because it was staying so far to the west side of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, by the time I had just gotten off work, I received a phone call from uh, one of our uh, esteemed uh, co-workers, Brian Harris, who catches the bait, saying, Hey, have you looked at the weather this week? And I was like, what do you mean? It doesn't look bad. And he was like, well, have you checked it recently? And sure enough, that little tropical system that they were forecasting made a little bit of a slight turn. And instead of staying along the Mexican coast and uh, the Texas coast, it kind of took a little bit of a right turn and uh, was forecast to kind of go up the middle of the Gulf, making this coming not yeah, this coming weekend, uh, a little bumpy, uh, or actually I should say very bumpy. Um, so that's how quickly it changed. In a matter of six hours, the weather had changed 180 degrees, 360 degrees, uh, the weather had changed. So let's pull it up now, and hopefully it's gone right back down because the weather is just that volatile, especially this far in advance 
so often people are like, hey, what's the weather like next week? Or what's the weather like 10 days from now? You just don't know. In the state of Florida, especially this time of year, the weather can change so much from day to day, let alone three days out, four days out, five days out. You cannot trust the weather. You cannot cancel your plans or cancel your trip if you have a chance of rain or you have a chance of this or chance of that. Um, because if you canceled your plans every time you had a chance of rain or a chance of a storm three, four days out in the state of Florida, you wouldn't leave the house ever, especially in the summertime. So um, keep that in mind as we look at this weather. Nobody freak out. If someone freaks out, we're, we're stopping the show. <laughs> so how you check the weather, the best, ways, best place to check the weather, especially for what we're going to talk about, which is advanced tropical forecasts. You want to go to fishing trips, scroll down to the weather links page. On the weather links page is our friend uh, Mike's weather page or spaghettimodels.com. This guy is awesome. He's right here in Tampa. He has a great, great website that I use religiously uh, to check the weather from our trips. But for advanced, uh, for advanced uh, tropical systems, these are the tools right here. I like this GFS model. Uh, that's what I like sticking to. Uh, so we're going to look at the GFS model. And this right here is what we're paying attention to, guys. This is the Gulf of Mexico. And this little low pressure hanging off of the southern Mexican mainland is what we're paying attention to. So today's May 31st. So this is today's forecast. This is uh, tomorrow, June 1st. This is later in the day, June 1st, June 1st. June 1st, June 2nd, that low pressure is solidifying, getting a little stronger. June 2nd, June 2nd's jumping around a little bit. June 3rd, June 3rd, June 3rd, June 3rd. Oh my goodness, it is strengthening and getting stronger. Let's see here, June 4th, June 4th, June 4th, June 5th, strengthened again. June 5th, June 5th, June 5th, June 5th, June 6th, June 6th, late in the day, June 6th, that low pressure finally inches its way off the mainland into the coast. Let me zoom in on this so you guys can see. That would probably be helpful, huh? So there it is. It's inching its way off the coastline at this point. So this is June 6th again, June 7th, June 7th, June 7th. Oh, it... Oh, it already changed. So three hours ago when I looked at this, this storm June 7th was over here in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. So now this model has already curved that that trajectory of that storm keeps it more on the west side of the Gulf of Mexico. So that means that our weather forecast is going to look even better this weekend. So this morning looked great. Three hours ago, it looked bad. I I would bet money that now when we looked at look at the weather forecast, it's not going to look great, but it's not going to look as bad as it did. So that is the weather model. Let's finish this weather model out. Sure enough, just goes right over to the Western Gulf and disappears. So that's beautiful. That's what we like to see. Keep it on the Western Gulf. Uh, hopefully it doesn't cause any damage or any pain to the people over there in the Western Gulf. Got a lot of friends fish out of Texas. I feel bad wishing storms on them, but hey, if it keeps it away from us, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> uh, but let's see here. Let's Now that we looked at that tropical uh, system, let's go back to the Hubbard's Marina website and look at the wind finder forecast because that gives us like a 10-day 10, 10 window. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Look how beautiful it looks. When I looked at this three hours ago, Three hours ago, it was forecasting 15-foot seas on Saturday, June 6th, and almost 16-foot seas on Sunday. So Sunday still doesn't look that hot. Uh, now they're forecasting like 12-foot seas, gradually getting up to 14. So still doesn't look that hot for Sunday, but it is dramatically decreased from where it was. So again, nobody freaks out looking at that. 
Nobody gets upset looking at that because it can change drastically. This morning, they were only forecasting like four foot seas. So it went from four foot to 16, 17, 18. Now it's down to 12 to 13. And that's June 7th. That's eight days from now. So, so far in advance. Definitely can't worry about it just yet. But you can guarantee that I'm going to be keeping my eyes on that every few hours and watching it. This week, though, uh, we have a little bit of weather coming in Tuesday. This is, a, again, far offshore report. So this is the worst that weather is going to be. So uh, Tuesday, we have a little bit of weather coming in. This is our first 39-hour trip of red snapper season, June 2nd. Doesn't get too rough, less than four foot, but definitely going to be pretty wind, uh, pretty rainy on that first trip. Wednesday, going to be a little rainy, but not too rough. Thursday, still a little rainy, not too rough. Friday, gets a little bumpier. And then slowly, Saturday and Sunday, it gradually increases. But again, no one freak out. It's still early. And uh, that is the weather forecast for now. So everybody hope and pray with me that that weather changes and continues to get uh, better and better through the next 24 to 48 hours because it's still very, very early. All right. And with that, we talked about the weather. Oh, last thing I want to show you is the, uh, before we get into the question, is the online store. So if you go to hubbardsmarina.com, click store, click marina store, we have a brand new online store yet again. We've got our D hookers, our reels, our Hubbard's Marina shirts, our Bull Bay rods. We've got some more Hubbard's Marina shirts. And now we've got Salinity Gear products right on the store. We've got tons of Salinity Gear. We've got some saltwater hippie stuff. Definitely a lot of cool shirts uh, to choose from with multiple different colors and lots of different options so check out that new and improved hubbard's marina online store some lots of cool stuff for sure uh, i'm excited about this new online store for sure hopefully you guys like it as much as i do uh, because we spent a lot of time and energy uh, my little sister actually did most of the work on that online store with the help of amanda and josh uh, but it's pretty cool for sure uh, so check out that new online store. And holy moly, we're going to get into the questions now, but we hardly don't have any questions. Remember, you can text your questions to that uh, phone number in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, looks like we've only got a handful of questions so far. So if you have a question you want answered, make sure you text it to that phone number, 727 Three nine three one nine four seven to get your question answered live during the show. Uh, but I think it's time. It's a nice interlude. I think it's time to give away our first free trip of the night. We're going to give away a five-hour half day for two guests. Five-hour half day for two guests going to the lucky winner named... Robert Riggs from Southern Ohio. Robert Riggs from Southern Ohio. Congratulations, buddy. You just won a free five-hour half day for two people. So thanks for watching. Uh, now we still got a 10-hour all day for two people and a 39-hour for one lucky guest. Right now we're sitting at 90. Uh, so... 430 430 live viewers between Facebook and YouTube so we've already got enough to give away one of those free 39 hour trips for one person and that'll be coming soon so stay tuned remember if you're one of those lucky winners like Mr. Robert Riggs just was you have to claim your free trip by texting that number in the upper right hand corner you got to text that number uh, your home address within about five to ten minutes to prove that you are watching the show live so make sure you send that phone number or you send that excuse me that home address uh, to that phone number in the upper right hand corner to claim your free trip if you're picked as one of those lucky winners 
All right, so we got some questions rolling in now. So let's get started on the questions. Uh, how are the regs for this year? The regs are very uh, decent. I mean, we have uh, Red Snapper season June 1st through the end of day August 1st. We have Amberjack May, June, or, uh, May, August, September, and October. We've got Gag Grouper June 1st through the end of the year. And Red, Red Grouper, Scamp Grouper, Mangrove Snapper, Yellowtail Snapper, Porgies, all those fish are open all year long. So regs are pretty good this year. We're definitely catching lots of fish. Uh, next one is about the vandalism. Saw the post about your vandalism. Sorry about that. Definitely was pretty upsetting to start my day off with that vandalism this morning. Uh, it was a tough. It was a tough start to the day, but hey, uh, it 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 can only go up from there. So it kind of put me at a little bit of peace, if you will, because. Uh, um, it only got better. <laughs> once once you've had a good portion of your uh, business assets get burned down <laughs> at a location, uh, your day can only get better. It can't get worse. And uh, that's what happened today. It only got better, for sure. Uh, let's see here. Steve, thanks for the stars, buddy. Uh, next question is... My grandson is three years old, been fishing since he was a few weeks old on his own, and used my fly fishing rod, casting and spinning reels as well. When is a good age to get him on the charter boat? Uh, Joshua is his name from Claremont. So uh, I would recommend getting eight-year-old Josh on a fishing trip ASAP. I mean, uh, the five-hour half-day fishing trip is fun for any level age or any level experience in any age fisherman. So the five hour half day is great fun for kids. The crew is great with kids. Uh, the fish that we catch on a five hour are very conducive to young anglers. Uh, so I would suggest getting them started young. Uh, the, the earlier they start, the better. Uh, and they get addicted to offshore fishing uh, very easily because it's just so much fun, uh, especially for younger children, seeing their face light up as they get the hang of offshore fishing there is just nothing better so i would suggest doing a five hour half day with your eight-year-old grandson josh and then once you've tried a five hour half day maybe think about trying a 10 hour all day and then maybe try one of the uh longer trips like a 12 hour night snapper uh, always work your way up slowly, do a half day or two, do a 10 hour or three, and then maybe a 12 hour night. But great way to start them is on the half day for sure. Thanks Randy Kessel and Brandy Scott for some more stars. I appreciate it. Let's see, what's the next question? Uh, Pete Bruno from Port Canaveral said hello, and I thought he had a question, but I don't see it. Pete, if you have a question, feel free. To finish that question up, holy moly, someone sent in some photos from the northeast, biggest sea bass I've ever seen. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and show that because it's so ridiculously big. Let's blow it up so we're not showing everybody's info. I don't know if I can. There you go. That'll work. Look at the size of that sea bass. That is a monster black sea bass. It's not a very big photo for you guys to see, but that is as, as that's the biggest one I've ever seen. But they get big over there on the northeast coast in uh, New England area. Uh, they catch a lot of big sea bass. That we we catch some big sea bass, but that one would be a record for Florida for sure. <laughs> Let's see here. What other questions? Uh, with red snapper season open tomorrow, I watch your video on catching them. Can you buy bonita strips? And if so, where? Uh, so bonita strips, I don't think I've ever seen bonita strips for sale. But what you can buy is whole bonita. So we sell bonita in our office, in our bait freezer. So before your trip, you can buy a bonita and uh, you can strip it up for yourself on the way out. So how you strip a bonita is you let it thaw out and then you fillet it just like you were filleting it to eat. But instead of flaying it to eat, you're flaying it to use for bait. 
Once you get that fillet, you lay it skin side down. Very important, gotta be skin side down on the cutting table. And uh, you strip it out and then flip it back over and then I just kind of perforate where I cut. Uh, that skin is very tough, so you wanna leave that skin on the meat for sure. If you start cutting from the skin side, it definitely kind of mushes that fillet. Um, if you cut from the fillet side up with which means the skin is down against the cutting table. It's very hard to get it apart. So a lot of times I'll strip it with the skin on the cutting table and then I'll flip it over and I'll feel where my cuts already were and it just takes a little swipe with the knife to break the skin. That way you have nice solid meat that's not squished and you have good uh, firm skin that's not all raggedy and uh, torn at and uh, that stays on your hook very well. That that. Uh, bonita skin hardly ever wants to come off your hook literally most of the time you have to use hook cutters or uh, what we call dykes to get that bonita skin off because it just never wants to come off your hook um, but the meat comes off the hook really well that oily smell I don't know how that's happening someone someone's calling me on messenger <laughs> um, but what I was saying is that Bonita strip works really well and you can buy a whole Bonita in our office before your trip uh, to use on one of those fishing trips. What else is in season June, July, and August? I would like and try I would like to try to get a hogfish. So hogfish, uh, there's so many fish out there that don't have any seasons at all. So many people are like, I want to come in June and July because I want a red snapper. Well, that's great and all. Red snapper are awesome, but there's so many fish that have tons, uh, tons of good eating qualities and they don't have seasons. So uh, things like uh, hogfish, uh, mangrove snapper, yellowtail snapper, um, mahi-mahi, some of my favorite eating fish, porgies, black sea bass, none of them have seasons. And uh, they're open all year. So hogfish are open all year. They bite best in cooler months. Uh, October, November, December, January, February, March, and even into April is a great time for hogfish. We do catch them all year round, but we typically catch them a little shallower on five and 10 hour trips, anywhere from about 30 to about 90 foot of water is the best place to target hogfish and catch them in good consistent numbers. Um, but they definitely, um, they're definitely a little tougher to get in the summertime. So uh, cooler months is best for hogfish, but June and July, what's available right now, uh, you can catch a little bit of everything, but amberjack is closed and um, triggerfish is closed. Uh, once August rolls around, amberjack will reopen, gags will stay open, red grouper will stay open, everything will stay open except for red snapper and triggerfish. Triggerfish closed May 2nd and will not reopen for the year. Red Snapper open June 1st. They're open through the end of day, August 1st. Let's see, I picked up a new 4 bait baitcaster reel today with 30 pound mono mainline and 30 pound fluorocarbon leader with a 4 ounce Senko 4 op hook. Do you think that's a decent setup for 5 and 10 hour trips? For sure. A 4 out reel with 30 pound test is awesome for 5 and 10 hour trips when you're fishing for snapper. If you're dropping down a live pinfish on a 10 hour trip, the red grouper bite's going well, probably is a little light. But uh, it would work for definitely anything on the half day. It would work for almost anything on the 10 hour trip for sure. Might want to bring something a little bigger if you're going to drop a big live bait, but that's about it. Uh, what about meal packages someone brought up? We do offer meal packages on all of our trips. You have the option to purchase a meal package if you're out on one of those uh, fishing trips with us where we supply hot food, cold drinks. Uh, you get happy hour beer pricing. You get uh, unlimited free water, unlimited free coffee, definitely uh, some cool options with that meal package a 39 hour meal package is around 40 43 dollars and change and that gives you a small meal on the way out that gives you a uh, midnight snack three course country breakfast it gives you a lunch sandwich three course dinner you get a couple or you get like eight sodas uh, a couple bags of chips, you get a, a couple candy bars, you get unlimited free water, unlimited free coffee, and a dollar off every beer you drink that whole 39-hour trip. So 
definitely the meal packages, in my opinion, is the way to go. Saves you from packing all that food and drink. Um, oh, good question. So this question is, how do you ship fish to another state? Um, so a lot of people have been asking us since forever, how do you ship fish? How do you get your fish back home? And we've been sending people to this place in Gulfport called Sending TLC. They do a great job. Sending TLC, they've been helping our customers for four, five, six years now. So no no, uh, no shade on Sending TLC over in Gulfport. If you want to use them, they're great. Um, but uh, Don's Dock inside John's Pass. So we're on the boardwalk. We're at the west end of the boardwalk right by John's Pass Bridge. If you walk to the bitter other end of the boardwalk, the east end of the boardwalk, it's about a f five minute walk. It's a one minute drive over to Don's Dock. Don's Dock now offers packing and shipping. They'll vacuum seal your fish. They'll freeze it up for you. They'll put it in a box. They'll mail it to your house. Pretty dope. So now you don't even have to leave John's Pass to get your fish packed and shipped. So we don't do packing and shipping. That's not something we've ever done. Um, but if you're interested in getting your ship, your fish shipped back home after your trip, uh, Don's Dock inside John's Pass, right next door pretty much, will get the job done. Or you can go to our friends at Sending TLC for sure. Uh, do big hurricanes and other severe weather ever stir up the bottom enough to cover or uncover structures? And how do these storms tend to affect fishing? Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, big storms definitely will cover up bottom, uh, uncover other bottom. Uh, Captain Brian, uh, who's been doing this for a uh, a long time. Uh, my dad, Captain Sam, who uh, is no longer with us, uh, I grew up fishing with. Uh, Captain Matt, who ran our overnight trips for a huge amount of years, uh, especially captains up in the northern Gulf that fish those little baby um, artificial reefs, uh, they will definitely all agree that um, uh, hurricanes big storms have a huge effect on the bottom. So for example, these large areas of hard rock bottom that we like fishing for red grouper, that Swiss cheese bottom, uh, is a lot of times adjacent to large areas of sand bottom. A big hurricane like Hurricane Irma, uh, a category five comes through and goes through shallow water. It can definitely affect the bottom. Sometimes uh, those bigger storms are pushing 14, 15, 16, even 18 foot seas. And an 18 foot sea will affect almost 60 to 70 to 80 foot down. So if a 15 foot sea comes near shore along our coast, it can move a huge amount of sand and take what was once a huge area of rock bottom where we catch a bunch of fish and completely cover it with sand but then uncover another area that we haven't fished. Uh, so it definitely can change the topography of the bottom dramatically. It can cover up entire ledges. It can severely affect your near shore bottom. Now offshore doesn't have as much of an effect on the bottom, but it definitely affects the fish. Those big uh, hurricanes, those big cold fronts, they're big storms, they're all low pressure systems. And those fish have a lateral line down the side of the fish. So a lateral line is most easily seen in one of these big boys. So a snook, a snook is, has the most defined lateral line. You can see it really clearly. Uh, also uh, a kingfish has a really defined lateral line, uh, but Every offshore fish, every fish in general, let me pull up a kingfish photo, there it is, uh, but every fish in general has these lateral lines, let me zoom in a little bit, you can see the lateral line on that kingfish goes down, it kind of does some waves back here, but lateral line, basically what it is, is it's essentially a barometer, so... <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry. So it's essentially a barometer, and that's how the fish sense movement underwater. So if you've ever been spear fishing before, you'll dive down in the water with your spear gun, get down towards the bottom, and a lot of times the fish, the initial um, 
the initial dive will make the fish kind of scatter and spook, but you'll swim up to that fish with your spear gun out slowly and kind of get uh, along the bottom. And a lot of times that fish will be nosing up towards you like, hey, what are you doing? And then all of a sudden they'll turn sideways for a second. And what they're doing is they're putting their lateral line towards you. And you have a split second to shoot them in the face while they got their side to you. Uh, and it makes it easy, especially hogfish. They're really, really well known for just swimming up to you and turning sideways and making it a really easy shot to shoot them uh, and take them home with you. Um, but that's what they're doing is they're showing their lateral line and it makes it um, it it allows them to sense your movement. So fish don't have the best eyesight. They have really good sense of movement underwater. They can change. They can sense that pressure change through their lateral line. So those low pressure systems, as they approach, those fish know they're approaching. So that big low pressure, as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, those fish get excited. They know bad weather's coming. They start eating really, really well. And then that storm comes. That weather gets bad. The water gets turbulent. They kind of shut down. And what they do is they hunker down in bigger structures. So, for example, if you've got this one eight-foot ledge and everything around it is little one-foot ledges, after a big storm, big cold front, big hurricane, you know that eight-foot ledge with all these small ledges around it is going to have all the fish. All the fish in the area just went home to that big, huge lead, a ledge to hang out and to take cover. Same thing with artificial structures like artificial reefs, the middle grounds, the elbow, the pipeline, behind big coal fronts, behind big storms, the commercial fishermen, the charter captains, the party boat captains, the more experienced recreational guys, they are all racing, literally racing to that big structure to catch those fish that are all grouped up. So definitely, long story short, hurricanes have a dramatic effect on the bottom and on the fish. All right. And yes, to answer your question, it's Jameson. A few people asked. <laughs> on the night trips, do you ever see shark activity or catch sharks as well? So on our 12-hour night mangrove snapper trip, we uh, definitely see sharks from time to time. Um, we don't target sharks on those trips. Uh, we most of the time target sharks on our shark fishing trip. Uh, and that's when we run into them the most. Um, but you do sometimes see them on pretty much any trip that you're fishing at night, especially when the fishing's good and you're catching a lot of fish. You got that fish action going in the water. Sharks have a chance of showing up. Um, so on 39-hour trips, on 12-hour night trips, you definitely have a chance of running into them. Uh, do we target them? Do we see them a lot? Not, not necessarily. We try to avoid them when we're snapper fishing. What times do the 10-hour trips leave? 10-hour trips leave 7 a.m. They return at 5 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, all year round. Let's see. What do you catch on the 5-hour trip in the middle of July? Uh, we catch the same thing on the 5-hour trip year round. We catch what we call gray snapper, affectionately called gray snapper. And uh, they're also known as a white grunt or Key West grunt. We also catch porgies and black sea bass. Funny story about the gray snapper. And uh, I think tonight is the show of, uh, of rabbit trails because I seem to keep getting off down rabbit trails. But hey, it's my show. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, this is, uh, that's a little bit of a small photo. Let me see if I can find a bigger photo of a nice big old stringer. There it is. So these are gray snapper. They're not the biggest fish. They're nothing to write home about. But they are incredibly, incredibly good eating. Super underrated. In my opinion, I would take a stringer full of gray snapper any day. If I'm going home to bring fish home... I would give you, I would trade you a 15 pound red snapper for a stringer full of gray snapper or white grunts any day. And people are probably sitting at home, you're crazy. I'm not, 
I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. Those gray snapper are incredibly good eating mild, tasty white meat fish. And they're super underrated because they're small, they're easy to catch, uh, but they're delicious. But they are called white grunts. So if you go to a biology meeting, uh, if you go to a National Marine Fisheries meeting, they're called white grunts. If you talk to most fishermen, they're like, Ugh, grunts. I don't like those grunts. You catch grunts. I'm not going fishing with you. Grunts are awesome eating fish. So long story short, back in the day, we were able to sell fish legally. Nowadays, you can't sell a fish that you catch on a party boat or charter boat. It's illegal. You can't sell a recreational caught fish in no way. No way is it possible to sell a recreationally caught fish anytime, any place, ever. But back in the day, we were allowed to sell these fish. So my grandfather, Captain Wilson, being the salesman he was, uh, he used to sell grouper and snapper and uh, he would have these white grunts, what everybody called grunts, out in the cutting tables. Long story short, people up on the boardwalk, they came down, they bought all the mangrove snapper, they bought the red snapper, they bought the gag grouper, the red grouper, the strawberry grouper, the scamp grouper, they bought the grouper and snapper, but they wouldn't buy the grunts. One day, Grandpa ran out of grouper and snapper early in the day, but he had a ton of gray snapper, or what we call or what everybody calls white grunts. So those grunts were all he had available to sell. So he had the bright idea of changing the name to Gray Snapper. Next person came up, what are those? Those are Gray Snapper. Oh, I'll take a couple. They took a couple, and guess what? The very next day, those people came back to buy more Gray Snapper or white grunts. They passed the grouper and mangrove snapper and red snapper he had on the cutting table to buy the white grunts because they thought they were that good. And thus the name was born. Ever since the name Gray Snapper or White Grunt was born. So on our boats and a lot of party boats and charter boats now across the state of Florida, those fish, these white grunts are called Gray Snapper. One of my favorite eating fish, super easy to catch, super prolific crazy mild white meat fish my one of my wife's favorite eating fish too thankfully uh and that's the story behind how the uh gray snapper name was born it's gray with an e gray with an e very important gray snapper uh it was my grandfather grandfather was selling fish and trying to sell fish and no one wanted the grunts because it's just a misleading name and before this is the best part. Before you're like, oh, you're misleading people. Or, oh, you're mislabeling that fish. Chilean sea bass. Next time you go to a restaurant and see Chilean sea bass on the menu. They're $30 a pound in the, in the frickin' fish markets for Chilean sea bass. We're going we're gonna to show you on Google because it's just not as dramatic unless you see it. So a uh, Chilean sea bass is actually a Patagonian toothfish. So a Chilean sea bass is a Patagonian tooth, toothfish. Look how ugly a Chilean sea bass is. You never see them whole. You just see their little fillets and they charge you $30 a pound for them. And they don't tell you they're Patagonian toothfish. They call them Chilean sea bass. And you think, we're misleading people calling white grunts gray snapper? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's a funny story. Hopefully you enjoyed it. <laughs> but I'm a little sensitive, a little defensive, as you can tell. <laughs> All right, let's see. It is time to give away a 10-hour all-day for two people. 10-hour all-day for two people. Let's see who the lucky winner of the 10-hour all-day for two guests is. Drum roll. I am terrible at the drums. Got no rhythm. William Solner. William Solner from Lockport, NY. See you in January. Well, William, you just won a 10-hour all-day for two guests. 
Make sure, again, if your pick is one of those lucky winners, you do have to claim that free trip in a minute or two by texting that phone number in the upper right-hand corner your home address so we can send you out that certificate. All right, let's get into some more questions. I'll try not to get off on a rabbit, rabbit trail. Let's see here. Are you looking at adding some additional 39 or 12 hour extreme trips in both June and July? I would love to. I would love to add some 39 hour trips in June and July uh, because before the show started, I was looking at it. We don't have a single 12 hour extreme trip in the entire month of June with any room on it. Totally sold out on 12 hour extreme trips for the entire month of June, unfortunately. And now going into July, still a lot of room on the 12 hour extreme trip in July. So still plenty of room in July on 12 hour extremes. Can't add any, can't add any 12 hour extremes. I would if I could, but June is in completely sold out. Every day in June is either privately chartered or it's a 12 hour extreme. So can't add any 12 hour extremes and 39 hour fishing trips. I've got one 39 hour fishing trip in June uh, on Sunday, June 7th. We've got one 39 hour fishing trip um, and uh, it's got one spot available. Everything else is completely full. And that's because we have these unfortunate limited capacities. Let me show you this. I'm going to make it easier to see before I show you. There we go. So this is why I can't add any 39-hour trips. There's my schedule. Every Tuesday, every Sunday, every Friday. There's one Sunday that doesn't have a 39-hour. So someone's going to say, oh, you can add one there. It's privately chartered. So... Every Friday, every Tuesday, every Sunday for the entire month of June is taken. And I can't add any 39-hour trips, or I would. So that is the problem, and uh, that's, a, that's a good problem to have. But unfortunately, we're facing that problem because we're limiting capacity so much because of this social distancing thing, which is a little frustrating, but it is what it is. Now, in the month of July, I have one spot left, July 21st, and I've got a handful of spots, I think 13 spots left, July 28th. So for the entire two-month Red Snapper season, I've got one spot June 7th, one spot June, July 21st, and 13 spots June, July 28th. And that's it, unfortunately, unless... Social distancing is not mandatory once they remove social distancing, man. And get this. So the state said you don't have to socially distance at the beaches. So if you're at a beach, you don't have to socially distance. If you're at a pool, you don't have to socially distance. If you're at a playground, you don't have to socially distance. But if you visit a small family business trying to recover from unprecedented closures and crazy, just draconian closures of our business, you have to socially distance. And that small business has to be forced to carry limited capacities. So if you're at a beach, park, playground, pool, no, no social distancing. Don't worry about it. You can all get close. But if you go to a small business, you better stay six feet apart. And no bars. Bars have got to remain closed. But y'all want to go to the beach getting drunk? Liquor stores are open. Beaches, no social distancing. Riddle me that one. Doesn't make much sense, does it? But then again, I'm a fisherman. And I'm not a politician. And that's why. <laughs> oh, See? Went down a rabbit trail already. Let's see. Next question. <laughs> Can the free fishing trips be used during the week of June 21st? No, our free fishing trips are uh, not available to be used during uh, June or July. So those free gift certificates uh, at the bottom of them have uh, the policies and procedures and there is a blackout date for red snapper season. So definitely pay attention to your gift certificates. 
Um, let me rephrase that. Your gift certificates you purchase don't have blackout dates, but donation gift certificates, things that we give away at Bass Pro during our live show, they do have blackout dates for our busiest time of year. If you're getting it for free, there there is a, a small catch. Um, our busiest time of year, like I just showed you, we're sold out for two months straight. We have to have some blackout dates on those donation gift certificates. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you can work with us on that. What do you prefer, live bait or cut squid? So it depends on what you're fishing for. Uh, I really like cut squid when I'm fishing for uh, red snapper. Red snapper love long strips of cut squid. Uh, red grouper love long strips of cut squid. Small cubes of squid work well for yellowtail snapper. And on the half day trip for my favorite gray snapper, also known as a white grunt. Uh, but live bait works really well for a variety of species too. So it kind of depends on what you're uh, targeting as far as um, what bait I would prefer. But definitely depends. Um, so it varies. If you could be more specific with your question, I'll be more specific with the answer. Uh, since Goliath grouper can be a nuisance and are gaining in numbers, why doesn't fish, allow, fish and game allow a quota hunt for them? <sighs> I, I have to take a second, compose myself before I answer this one. So Goliath grouper, are, in my opinion, are a nuisance. There's too many of them out there. Um, I was at the Goliath grouper meetings uh, that FWC held about four years ago. They went around the state, they had about 12 meetings across the Florida uh, state, and they asked fishermen and divers and anybody in uh, that had any concern for Goliath Grouper to show up. I went to the meeting that they held right here in beautiful St. Petersburg at Bill Jackson's, and I was one of one fishermen in the audience everybody else was divers and environmentalists and had a few tree huggers in there and they all wanted to hug goliath groupers and never see any of them harvest so what do you think happened with the goliath groupers they're still protected <laughs> so right now there is no chance for goliath groupers uh to come back what's going to need to happen with goliath groupers is people are going to have to start lobbying the FWC commission meetings and uh, asking the FWC commission meeting after meeting to reevaluate the Goliath grouper protection. And the FWC is definitely going to have to uh, look at it again. Hopefully this time fishermen will show up and make their voices known. And uh, hopefully we'll have some type of scientific take uh, because they can't do accurate stock assessments without dead fish. And even the scientists can't get dead Goliath grouper right now uh, because they're that protected. Not even the scientists can go out and get them. So right now there's a closure on snook, redfish, and trout in our area. You can't keep snook, redfish, and trout. But scientists from FWC are going out there and collecting snook, redfish, and trout because they have to have a small number of those fish to take home uh, to their labs and do uh, life history, to do otoliths, and to do stomach content sampling, to do DNA sampling, to figure out where those fish are stratified, to, uh, to uh, test their population and get good, uh, good stock assessment information. With Goliath grouper, they're completely closed. They can't kill them to do science. So how do they get an accurate stock assessment? They can't. So the FWC needs to look at Goliath Grouper. The only way they do that is with stock stakeholder input from you guys. That's you guys. You got to show up to a meeting. You got to email your commissioners. You got to ask them to look at it. The commission needs to allow science to go kill some Goliath Groupers uh, with some type of limited, part, uh, limited permit harvest. They need to do a good stock of assessment, and then we'll have a tag program open on Goliath Grouper, similar to what we have on alligators. I highly agree, and I would love to see that, but unfortunately, it's going to come from the masses. No one person can get that one done. Uh, 
have you ever come across any fish or sharks that you couldn't get on board, like goliath groupers or large sharks? Definitely. We come across large sharks, goliath groupers that we can't get on board, nor would we want to get on board uh, quite often. And a lot of times what we do is we'll either break them off when they're still down in the water or we'll get them up to the surface and de-hook them uh, as best we can or cut the line as close to the hook as we can. Uh, we're not allowed to use stainless hooks so they all uh, either break or they rust out very quickly. Why don't you have any 63 hour fishing trips? Um, because uh, as I showed you before the schedule is packed with 39 hour fishing trips in order to schedule a 63 hour trip I have to cancel two I have to cancel two 39 hour trips uh, because the 63 hour leaves Thursday returns Sunday so we literally have to cancel two 39 hour trips to run one 63 hour and a 39 hour trip uh, carries more people it makes more people happy it gives access to more people a 63 hour only gives fishing access to around 16 people and if it is three foot seas a 63 hour can't go you can't go deep drop fishing in three and a half foot seas whereas a 39 hour fishing trip three foot seas four foot seas five foot seas even six foot seas isn't going to stop a 39 hour fishing trip so 39 hours give more access to more people more reliably we cancel less trips we make more people happy there's the math that's why we don't offer 63 hour trips i'd love to 63 hour trips are a lot of fun we love deep drop fishing we catch a lot of fish out there in deep water but you don't make people happy offering 63 hour trips. The only way we could offer those and survive is by charging a ridiculous amount of money. And I like to make our fishing trips as affordable as possible for as many people as possible. And I like to try to make as many people as happy as possible. So 39 hour trips catch plenty of fish. There's no reason to run past fish to go find fish. That's what my grandfather always said. And that's what my dad continues to say. Uh, so that's what we do. Which fishing charter times are better, mornings or afternoon? That's my favorite question. Um, let's see if I can zoom in and show you this. Uh, uh, too far. So let's... Uh, still a little too... I'm trying to get my screen right so you can see this easily. Uh, there we go. That'll work. Nope, there it goes. Screen's not wanting to cooperate. All right, so there's the screen. Today, no, tomorrow's what I want to show you. Tomorrow morning, sold out morning trip. Completely sold out. Only 20 in the afternoon. Half full in the afternoon, sold out in the morning. Tuesday, sold out in the morning. Wednesday, 26 in the morning, zero in the afternoon. Great examples of everybody thinks the morning half day is the best. Monday morning's half day trip has been sold out for two days. And we only had six people in the afternoon. So 48 hours in advance, the morning trip sold out. We only had six people in the afternoon. Guess what? The morning is not any better. A lot of times, the last couple weeks, the morning has been worse than the afternoon. And I will tell people that. I will say, hey, we're catching more fish in the afternoon. The afternoon's better fishing. And people still book the morning. It's the same thing as the back of the boat's definitely the best place to fish. I get it all the time. I always say, hey, there's not one spot better than any other on the boat. And then I'll have someone come off the trip and say, I know you were just saying that because the back of the boat's definitely the best spot to fish. No. The back of the boat's not the best spot to fish. Morning does not have better fishing when you're talking offshore fishing at least. So the morning's not the best time to fish. The back of the boat's not the best place to fish. And your captains and crew want you to have a good time. We're not going to lie to you. So you can trust us a little bit uh, about when we, when we tell you things. And trust me, morning is not better than afternoon. As far as which is better, morning half day or afternoon half day, you never know. Sometimes uh, in the in the uh, summer, the afternoon is better. Sometimes the, the morning is better. In the winter, the afternoon is a lot of times better. 
in the summer, sometimes the morning is better. It really comes down to uh, it really comes down to the weather. That that has more of an effect than anything on which is better. Uh, good question though. Thanks for bringing that one up. Uh, what depth of water will you focus on when red snapper season opens? Red snapper uh, trips. The trips to catch red snapper on are 12-hour extreme trips, 39-hour trips, 44-hour trips, or private fishing charters on our 12-hour extreme boat, the Flying Hub 2, or small group uh, fishing charters on the Hub. The best place to start targeting red snapper is about 120 foot of water. So any trip fishing beyond that's going to have a chance at red group or red snapper. If I'm going to go on a trip that targets red snapper, like a 12 hour extreme, 39 hour, 44 hour, most of the time we're definitely going to be starting to fish around 140 to 150 foot of water when we're targeting red snapper on those trips. Because that's about as shallow as you want to start for red, consistent red snapper, I should say. Uh, let's see. I think we are pretty much out of time. Um, we talked a little bit about the weather. We showed you that new online store. Don't forget about the virus page. Uh, we've been talking about this virus page since May 4th when we reopened. This huge green banner across the top of our website. When you go to fishing trips, that very first thing. When you go to info, that very first thing. When you make a reservation, that very first thing. There's multiple places to find the COVID-19 operating policies and procedures on our website. When you book a trip in your confirmation email, in your reminder email, there's also a health and safety section with a link to that COVID-19 operating policy and procedure list. And still, people show up confused when we start talking about some of those operating policies and procedures. So please make sure you check out those operating policies and procedures and get familiar with them before you show up because there's definitely some changes. And thanks Josh Maloney for some sending some stars. I didn't forget, I'm still watching for stars. I know a lot of you guys did it in the beginning. I appreciate that. Um, but what I was saying is there's definitely some changes because of the virus. The main change on the fishing trips are your fishing spots are not guaranteed. So if you book spot 12 or you book spot 56 or you book spot 32, do not come out expecting to have that exact fishing spot. Because we have to do that socially distance thing. I mean, we lost our entire spring. Now we're losing 30% a, a, a of our summer because we're limiting capacity. And I have to make people angry because I'm moving fishing spots. Because you can't fish where you picked because I got to spread people out and make sure parties are socially distanced. So sometimes even the people on the back of the boat get moved off the back of the boat. So it's uh, we have to spread people out, even in the back of the boat. So it's definitely a challenging thing. And I need you guys to be aware of those policy and procedures before you show up. So when you do show up and you realize your spot changed a little bit, or the bunk that you booked isn't going to be the bunk you're sleeping in, you guys know what you're getting yourselves into. And also, our inside cabin areas are closed. We have different sanitizing techniques. You should try to bring some hand sanitizer with you if you got it. We recommend you wear a mask. All those different things are all on those virus policy and procedure pages. Check it out, please. So that way when you show up, it's not, uh, it's not a surprise to you. It's always, it's always good to be prepared. Thanks, Randy Kessel, for sending some more stars. Now, we talked about Amberjack season ending, Red Snapper season opening, Gag Grouper season opening. I think we covered just about everything tonight. Don't forget about, uh, uh, don't forget about the live show next week. Uh, so, um, I think, yeah, I think this week, or uh, um, the event, the live show event. So we have an event on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook page. Let me show you. For those of you who are on Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook, I'm going to bring up my Facebook page so you can see what I'm working with. So when you go to Facebook, hopefully 
this isn't surprising. Facebook released a new layout. So this is Facebook.com even though it's black. When you go to Facebook and you go to Hubbard's Marina on the Hubbard's Marina page, uh, you can see the events tab, our live stream show events. No, I don't want to go to main events. I want to go to Hubbard's Marina events. There it goes. So events that way. That's that's how you get to it. Click events under our name. <laughs> so the live fishing conversation uh, show. This today was the last date because they only let me do it for a year. So guess what? I've got a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish this now, and I'm gonna put the link into the comments. So please, if you're watching on Facebook. Click this link that we're going to drop into the video now and make sure you click going or click interested. Make sure you share it with your friends and tell everybody how much you love this show and how they should watch it next week. So make sure I just dropped the link in there. You guys can uh, check it out. Make sure you uh, check out that live stream uh, fish and show event page that way you can keep up with us for the next year those are all the dates for the next year of this live show fishing conversation q a uh, and if a show has to be canceled because something came up or a fishing charter got scheduled i have to go on or whatever it is that event page is the best way to check on status of the shows. So even if you're watching on YouTube, that event page is a good page to have bookmarked because if something's going on, I'm going to make the announcement on that page. It's the best way to reach those of you who watch the show. So check out that event page that I just published. Make sure you click going or interested to help me spread the word. I'd appreciate it. And with that, I will see you next week. Um, but before we sign off, I didn't forget. I like scaring some of you. Some of you start freaking out. Don't forget about the 39-hour trip. Uh, don't worry, I won't forget. <laughs> but hopefully we'll see you next week. Hopefully everybody will tune in next week. And uh, let me see. Oh, last question. So the star thing that everybody's talking about it is, again, a new thing that Facebook rolled out. Thanks, Bill Corley, for the stars. Basically, it, Facebook gave me a notification one day that said we're eligible for stars, and it gave it to us. So basically, you can choose to send us stars, and it is a way of showing support for Hubbard's Marina. We can use those stars for Facebook advertising, for other methods of reaching more people. So appreciate you sending stars it helps us reach more people and grow even bigger on facebook so we do a lot with the stars and i appreciate you sharing them with us and it's right there at the bottom where you go to comment there's a little star icon you can click the stars and you can get some stars to send us if you want if you like our show if you don't like our show even if you like our show you don't have to send us stars but i appreciate it Thanks, Barbara Austin, for sending us some stars. So let's see who won that free fishing trip, that free 39-hour trip for one person, one guest, 39-hour fishing. Let's see who won. Paul Carteau from Michigan. Howdy from Michigan, Paul Carteau. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Sorry for running a little bit late tonight. Thanks for all the stars. Josh, I appreciate that ending the show strong. And uh, thanks everybody else for watching. We'll see you next week for another episode of our live stream fishing show. Don't forget to click that link I dropped into the comments. Make sure you check out that new event page. Give it a uh, going. Give it an interest. Help us out. Help us spread the word. And uh, we'll see you this week. Make sure you stay tuned to our live stream videos. We're going to have lots of fishing photos this week from our red snapper season and gag grouper opener. So have a great night. Have a great week. And uh, God bless.